Have you ever had a discussion with a family member? Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a really close friend. Uh, maybe you attended a conference where you're just, you're on fire. You come home, the, the confidence level is just at a level that you've never felt before. So why is it then when we have those times when we're super confident, right? The, the family member or friend is really pouring in uh, what they believe, what we think that we can possibly do. And then we go out in our own regular life, right? We get back to reality and it just falls flat. We don't ever accomplish the things that we're looking to possibly do. Why does that happen? Well, that's something I've been trying to figure out on my own for a very long time. And today on the Rich Mind Podcast, we're going to have a discussion and a conversation about that very subject. So if you seem to have that issue where, where you feel super confident in one moment, but then you go back into your life and your regular day-to-day -day activities, and you just don't see yourself accomplishing what you're really looking for, this episode's going to be for you. So stay tuned. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, we're going to talk about the challenges that we're all facing, right? We all have those self-limiting beliefs. We all have those self-sabotage patterns. Well, maybe I shouldn't say we all. I do, and I assume that you do as well. So the point today is I've got it uh, brought on another special guest, and this guest has been on with us several times, but she is someone that has uh, really been the rock as far as for me to be able to try to accomplish and go out there and achieve more than what I feel like I can I can do on my own. So we were having a conversation over the last couple of days that I thought that we could really kind of take this, uh, hit the record button and just share a ton of value, hopefully help you uh, and even help ourselves right through this conversation, figure out why is it that we, we can feel really super confident in one moment, but then we get back into our mundane day to day activities and it just like it falls away to we just get back into our old ruts, our old uh, routine system. So I've got back on with us today, my beautiful wife, Stacy J. Wilson. And we are going to discuss uh, self-sabotage patterns, uh, self, uh, self-confidence, uh, just how we can try to break through some of these limiting beliefs and to try to achieve more in our day-to-day -day activities. So first off, welcome back to the show, Stacey. Hello. Thank you. That's all you've got? You've been on the That's show awesome. multiple times. That's all you've got today? Hello. Thank you. I'm interested to see what this conversation leads to today because, yeah, it's something that we talk about often. Well, so. so why don't you start off with what some, maybe some questions, what is it that when I say that, like we were having a good conversation again about it this morning. Uh, so one thing folks, one thing that Stacy and I do, we've been married nearly for 30 years. We're coming on, well, actually coming up on 28. We've been together for almost 30. Right. So obviously we've been through some ups and some downs. We <laughs> met when we were little kids and now we're not little kids anymore. And so, uh, but we have conversations. I guess that's the point I wanted to try to make is we talk, if not every day, multiple times a week. And it's pretty deep conversations. And this has been one that's been coming up here the last uh, few days lately. So is there anything that you can think of that um, would help maybe kind of kick us off with what we've been talking about? Just, um, Gosh, it's a lot, right? Uh, I would say, you know, lately for myself, I know I want more. I know I want to do more. I know I want to be more. But figuring out what exactly that means, that word more, um, is difficult. That's where, you know, you get hung up. You have that gut feeling that, oh, what should I be doing? Or what could I be doing? Or what new direction do I need to go? Like I've said in past podcasts, I love change. And I feel a tide turning again within me, but I don't have my finger on the pulse of what that is. So then it makes you wonder, you know, do you need to be doing that? Is there something more? Um, can I even do something else? What else would it be? Am I good enough to come up with something new? Would anybody be interested in what my idea is? I mean, it just, it's a tumbleweed, right? Of coulda, shoulda, wouldas, can I, should I, how am I? All kinds of things start to rumble. And then it's easiest to let it go crazy and then just say, ah, eh, I'm good doing what I'm doing. I'll just keep going where I'm at. So, so why yeah, easy to so shut it was, down? <laughs> yeah. So that was part of the conversation we were having the other day is that, yeah. and I, and I understood when you said this, so this was 
like almost an epiphany for me is how you said this is that when we were having a conversation and at that moment, I was trying to pour some confidence into you. So let me just say this right off the bat. We were talking about this too, is that when you're looking at the other person, right? When you're having a conversation with somebody, it's easy to see all the greatness that they've got, right? So I look at you and I see all the fantastic opportunities that you have, all the great skills that you have, just all the good stuff, right? But it's hard when it's reflected or when you're trying to reflect that back onto yourself, that's where it becomes difficult. And all those self-doubt sentences or questions and all that starts popping in. But you made a statement the other day that when I was trying and I was uh, trying to pump some confidence into you about where you are, it's like almost everything kind of just smoothed out. You're the chatter that was going on in your mind, just kind of, mm-hmm. it got calm, I would call it, right? I, think, I yeah. believe, it, don't let me put words in your mouth. That's kind of what you said, I believe. Mm-hmm. But then you felt like once that conversation would be over, that chatter would all of a sudden become like chaos, like mass chaos, like nonstop yeah. chaos to the point mm-hmm. where it's trying to then get you back to revert like you just said, back to normalcy, which is just Mm -hmm. mundane, the comfort zone. So can you speak to that a little bit? Because I loved it when you said that, which has spurred this conversation today about how that made you feel and and kind of where you came from with that. Right. And it's very true to my core when I'm being talked to and just being able to ramble my ideas and my, I get excited, right? You know me, I get excited. I'm like, I am all in. I can make this happen. Nobody's going to stop me. Same thing when I attend a conference. I take more notes than probably the normal human being. I've come, I almost have their speeches <laughs> word for word written down. Um, you know, it's true. I know it's but, true. And then that I get that fire in the belly feeling. And that's who I am and how I like to be most of the time is I love that adrenaline. I love adrenaline pushes. But once you walk away from the adrenaline push and you, for me, a lot of times I stop and I'm like, okay, now these were the ideas I had. Now, what exactly was I going to do with them? Oh, wait. And then, and then where do you start? And then suddenly it becomes like a dark dome, like I don't even know where I was, what I was even thinking two hours ago. Why was I even, what was I thinking for one? And why was I thinking I could do that? Um, And yeah, it becomes chaos because it's like, well, I don't even remember where I said I was going to start, but talking it out or being at a conference, you're like, oh, I can go home and I'm going to do A, B, C, D, or even talking to you. I'm going to start here and do this and talk, reach out to that person. And three hours later, I'm like, who did I even say I was going to talk to? Did I, did I mention a name in particular? And you're like, yeah, you said blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh yeah, that was part of the conversation. Um, so yeah, it's interesting how you can have clarity and goals and I'm learning for myself. I have got to start writing it down as I'm having the discussion or like <laughs> I've joked with you that I just need to turn my phone on and hit record so I can listen to whatever it is I said and maybe that'll help in the future because I can hear myself, the excitement in my voice, maybe it will remind me what I was really thinking about in that moment. Does that make sense? So, well, <laughs> yes. And so that's where I'm hoping to to prod you with a few more questions to try to dig a little deeper. Because I, I think that this conversation can be super valuable to those out there that are having the same situation. I assume yeah. most of us on a different level, right? We can be at the beginning of making some different changes or we can be, you know, super successful or quote unquote successful out there in society and still be having these self doubts and all this kind of stuff. So then it's a matter of how do we break through them? So let's just fast forward. So you've gone to the conference. Let's just, let's just use the conferences, for example, because you're right. Mm -hmm. You've been to many conferences on your own, right? We've been involved in, and you have, and I have both, right? We've been involved in different uh, multi-level marketing, network marketing type businesses. And one thing that's mm-hmm. great about those opportunities are the conferences, meaning that they bring right. in fantastic speakers and they want to pump you up. Obviously, they're trying to get you motivated to go out and promote and sell those products. But that's like one of the best things. So you've been to many of those conferences on your own mm-hmm. where you're just like, you come home you're, and I literally say you're on fire. It's like your hair's on fire. You're, it's like, it's like yeah. who are you? So then you get home and like you said, it can be as short as even a few hours. Those it's like almost like the ideas and the thoughts just escape you. Like they disappear. Can you, in your own words, and I don't want words in your mouth, but in your own words, Mm -hmm. can you discuss kind of what that is? It are they thoughts? Are they ideas? Are they like feelings? Can you, do you, does your temperature change? Do you see what I'm saying? Where I'm going with that as far as like, what is the beginning trigger 
to be, so what that is, is basically it's a self-sabotage pattern. That's my argument. Right. Is that for mm -hmm. myself, when I discovered what my self-sabotage pattern was, then I could start to go to work to try to correct it. So have you through your self-diagnosis been able to figure out what this self-sabotage pattern is for yourself? For myself, like you said, I get that the fire, like, you know, I get the, I'm going to go do it all. I'm going to conquer the world feeling. And yeah, back when I did the multi-level marketing ones, for sure, you come home in the first two, three weeks, you're great and on fire. And then you get the nose or then life starts to happen and you just fall back into life. Life is, I mean, it's hard to say it. You're supposed to control life, not life control you. But I think a lot of us walk around with life controlling us because it happens, right? Life is just, you think you, you think you have a plan in the morning and by the night you're like, well, what happened to that day? Did I even, was I even a part of it? And so I think that's what starts to tumble for me is that, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this today. I have great intentions in the morning. And by mid afternoon, you're like, well, that didn't happen. And well, that should have got done. And it's easy just to put it on the shelf. Well, I got to deal with this life stuff first, and then I'll go back to working on what I want to be working on. Um, but like I talked to some of my friends the last couple of years, I've been going to consistently to a ladies conference. That's all about business, all about growth, all about all that. And I can reflect on that one more and draw back the feelings that I get from that conference than I have from some of the other ones. And the last few years I've tried to remind myself and take, I, well, I build, you, you know, this, I build a day in to stay behind by myself after a conference is over to so, try. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah, describe what that is. So I know what that means, but yeah, yeah to okay. go into what so, does that mean? Most conferences I've been going to lately are a couple days of full in the fire in the belly stuff. And I allow myself an extra day after that conference has ended. It usually ends on Saturday. I stay all day Sunday um, by myself, hotel room. Granted, it's a little mom break or wife break or whatever. But at the same time, it is you know, you, you don't sleep well that whole time because your mind is racing. So I try to take that extra day to go back through the notes, go back through the things that I highlighted during the day and try to elaborate on why that was important when I wrote it down or when I highlighted it. And then like I was discussing with my friends this year at dinner after the conference is that, um, this year I tried to go in and put down, you know, you tab. 10, 15 things that you write down that you want to implement. Well, you can't do them all as soon as you get home. So I tried to put one or two of those ideas on my calendar. So when I would flip to the next month, oh, there's two more of those ideas and flip again. And oh, there's two more of those ideas. So I've slowly tried to re, um, reinstitute some of those things so I don't lose it as much. But even then, if you don't open that calendar and look at it, or you don't go back to the notes of those notes of the notes, you still, it's still kind of locked away. And um, so then that's where our discussions daily help me. Oh yeah, I remember writing that down. Then I go hunting for it, especially when you've ignited something in me. Um, that's what it takes is somebody reminding you that, oh yeah, oh, I did talk. Oh, I had that idea. And it gets easier, I think, a little bit more with practice, especially when you have somebody daily or every couple of weeks or a friend that you can reach out to and say, hey, do you remember when we talked about this? So this last conference, I was with four or five friends. So we are able to reach out and say, hey, do you remember what we said we were going to do because of this? It doesn't make sense in my notes right now. And uh, and one friend in particular, yeah, we're both real good about saying, oh, yeah, we were supposed to be doing this or we're going to go after that. And so it's been... It's hard to remember in your day to day, but if you can remind yourself to go back and look or remind yourself why it slows me down, back down a little bit to be able to race towards that thing, which is where I feel like I am now. We right now racing. You feel yeah, like you're racing? I'm ready to race again. Yeah. Ready to race again and go after some of those thoughts that I had four or five months ago and re-implement. So from when you were on fire, because this conference was mm -hmm. August. less than a year ago. Uh, okay. August. Yeah. Yeah. Say, August. Yeah. Uh, six months ago, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what do you think has been the culprit to keep you from not necessarily taking a lot of action yet, like up to this Um, moment? For me there again, and I, you know, as soon as I said it was August, it's like, well, then you come home and we had life happen. A baby was born. We had a little grandson. Um, And then you ran into holidays and then you do the first of the year thing. And now it's like, oh, okay. For me, I always feel like I have a nice little reset because everybody talks about that you know, from, well, for me, from August to December, you start thinking, okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Then the new year's thing happens and you really start thinking about what you want to do. This year, I allowed myself the permission not to do it at new year's. This year, I've put it on myself to do it at my birthday. Lucky for me, my birthday's in March. So my birthday just happened. So for me, that's kind of my new reset. I look at, okay, this year, okay, look, what did I do in that year? Now, what am I going to do this next year? And for me, I've let, allowed it to become more my birthday as my signature versus the beginning of a new year. Because the beginning of a new year is always crazy anyways. So I like to use my birthday the last, probably last two years. I've started using my birthday as that new start rather than new year, new start. So I think that's part of it is that's only my birthday was what? Less than 10 days ago, not even a week ago. So, so yeah. everybody. Say happy birthday to Stacy. <laughs> happy birthday, Stacy. Ah, thank you. Yeah, we yeah. won't even say how old you are. Yeah, that's good. Let's not do that. You just told them that you're a grandma, so they maybe oh. can do a little bit of math. But yeah, let's not <laughs> let's not go there today. Right. So, yeah, exactly, because he's awesome. Uh, he is. So in the future, little Rowan, if you're listening, we love you. So, yeah. anyways, uh, so the self sabotage, I mean, it it runs. It's tough. I mean, we've been dealing with it individually and then collectively for, like I've mentioned, about 30 years. So a lot of times for myself, it's when you're speaking that comment, I'll I'll flat out look at you and say, okay, Stacey J, it's your turn. It's it's time (laughs) for you to just keep, just let it flow. Meaning I just, I'm ready for you just to keep telling me all the good stuff that I needed to hear, right? Almost just like building up that confidence for that day. If I'm feeling down, not really feeling like motivated to, uh, to even just jump on and do a podcast or, or right. create a post or so it, it's even just in the last few years had I've, I've had the confidence even to do what I'm doing now, putting myself out there, going on social media. It was even just a few years ago and, and you're going to laugh when I, and I admit this out, out there in the end of the world, but just sending emails to folks was just like, <laughs> yeah, I know that's funny. That's super yeah, you used funny. to have me hit send. Yeah, I would have anxiety <laughs> over hitting and sending emails to individuals. A lot of times it wasn't necessarily business related, but it was more of a, it was definitely not friendly or it wasn't a friendship. I mean, it wasn't something where I was friends with these people, but it was like more of a, uh, I guess maybe it was a little bit of a business. It wasn't a transaction, but it was just reaching out to folks. Yeah, I would struggle hitting send to the point where you would have to help me. That's how bad my self-confidence has been. And this hasn't been very long since this has happened. But one thing we discussed today and that where I want to take Mm -hmm. this conversation was keep going. Yeah. That's kind of the motto we've, you know, developed. And obviously it's, you know, it's pretty generic. Anybody can pick it up, (laughs) but yeah, but we've, we've used that now for quite some time. And that was one thing we were saying this morning. I've, I personally, I was, just the other day. So I'm on YouTube, right? Obviously we're recording this video and this is audio, but then I put it on YouTube. I put it all over everywhere. But back in 2011, I had launched a YouTube channel and I was trying to do similar things to what I'm doing now. And I went back and I looked at that YouTube channel. And if I just would have kept going, if I just would have had the confidence Mm -hmm. in myself to keep going, where would I be? Yeah. So I'm not trying to beat myself up with that question, but at the same time, it's, it's motivation for me to keep going today. So can you talk about that? Meaning the keep going piece, how important that is. I mean, you can speak it back to me, like you're like you pumping me up if you'd like, but at the right. same time, it, it's, it's difficult, but at the same time, it's, it's crucial to, to accomplish anything. Yeah, obviously keep going is easy. Like you said, it's easy to say it. Um, but it's something you consciously have to be willing to do. Cause I always think of, um, what are those little roly poly bugs that you can tuck and roll and go away from whatever it is that you're supposed to keep going on. That's what I think of when I tell myself that "Eh, it'll be okay if I don't do that. It's like, wait a minute. I don't want to be that ugly little gray roly poly bug rolling away from something. Um, 
it's the image that I put in my head when I start to tell myself, ah, eh, maybe you can't do that. Or, oh, maybe that's the wrong idea. Um, I get that gray bug. Whereas when I think and tell you, and I, you know, when I'm pumping you up or when I'm on fire, I see bright, bright light, bright sunshine, bright oranges, bright pinks, bright yellows. That's what I see when I'm talking to somebody and it's like, you can do this. You got this. You've, you go, go, go because it does, it just radiates. I feel like it radiates from inside my almost, you know, the top of your stomach through my heart just gets that feeling of that color. And that's why I say when I got that feeling going for myself or for anybody, it's an unstoppable moment. It's a, okay, yeah, we're going to nail this. This is going to happen. Um, so yeah, that's what I try to give you whenever, you know, when I know that you've kind of can tell certain mornings you get up and you're like, uh Oh, <laughs> this day may not be going. <laughs> he's, he's not a, he's not on the right train today. So let's get him on the, the happy train rather than, you know, the, Oh, what am I going to do today? Train. And yeah, we both do it for each other though. There's days where I'm like, I do not feel like doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, everybody has that, everybody has that feeling, but at the same time, you got to, for me, I try to slow it down and be like, okay, why did I choose to be doing this? Why did I choose to start this thing? Um, like I said, right now I'm rolling through, I've already got my business, my wedding business. I want to roll with that. It obviously keep going. I love my wedding business, but I also told you the other day that I know that I'm supposed to be doing something more to help other people feel that happiness and feel the permission to stop and be happy. Right. So I don't know what that looks like yet, but that's where, I mean, just saying that right now, I can feel my whole self just glow up because that's what needs to be thought about. Now, when I stop and, you know, in five minutes from now, and it's like, Oh, how am I even going to do that? Then it starts to get gray again. That's where that chaos, you know, that self doubt of, can I even pull that off? Who would want to be a part of what I'm considering doing? Is somebody really going to want to spend a weekend away just being away? Um, so your mind starts to race and it's to slow yourself down. Think about who you've had that conversation with. It is like, yeah, that's a good idea. You should explore it. Yeah, you should go for it. That's where I try to do that for you because we both know what you're working on and building. And I try to do that with the kids have big businesses or starting businesses and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you can do this. You're, you're on the right track. Just keep going. There's no, you know, there's no reason to shut it down. So yeah. And that's always been my personality too, as you know, is to keep you going, keep everybody else going, which I think helps me in return. Remember that. Okay, wait a minute. I got to do that too. So that's, that's what I was about to say. That's usually yeah. the issue is that you're great at doing that for other people, but sometimes it's difficult for you to do that back onto yourself. And so that right. where this conversation came in for you to reflect on that for yourself, I think was super powerful. I think sometimes said, for me, it's a permission thing. That's so you said two things in that little, yeah. little snippet there that you, you riffed on. And that yeah. was awesome. You said two things. One of them was choice mm -hmm. and the other one was permission. And you just mm -hmm. said it again. So the choice piece, one thing that I think that we realized early on in our life together was that it, it really, everything we, we could choose to do anything we wanted and how we did that. Do you remember how we, do you remember? I'm going to just going to, this is almost like a pop quiz. Do you remember how we used to always make all these big old life choices? Pros and cons list. Pros and cons list. Yeah. Pros and cons list good. all good. the time. I was hoping yeah. you'd come over that. No, yeah. Was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes. So folks, it's once again, Keep going. Okay. That phrase, it's super simple, but it's super powerful. Mm -hmm. The other piece, this is how Stacy and I have made the <laughs> biggest life decisions in our, I mean, in our lives with our yeah. family, with our jobs, with our careers, mm -hmm. with our businesses, with everything is a pros and cons list. Literally we would yeah. write you, you're the writer. So you yep. would grab a piece of paper or a pad and you, we would literally sit there. Okay. What's the pro? of, you know, what's the positive of whatever decision we were having to make, whether it was yep. moving, whether it was leaving a job, whether it was starting a business, whether it was having children, whether it was having another child, yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and we would go down and list all the pros and cons to both sides. And then we would, at the very end, we would ask ourselves, okay, 
if we made this decision, can we live with the consequences of whatever we determined was the positives or the negatives of that, of that decision? Do you remember doing that all the time? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Especially early oh, on. Yeah. yeah. So the, that's where the choices piece I wanted to just kind of tie yeah. in there with, with something that we do and we still do it. Um, it's almost like I just, it's like that just came to me. That's like, we do that all the time that I thought maybe that would be valuable to the listeners. It's just yeah. a simple pros and cons list as far as what's positive, what's negative about the potential outcome. And it makes you go through the exercise of thinking through what the outcome could possibly be. And you're not going to necessarily get it right hundred percent of the time, but it's been, uh, it's been pretty accurate. It's been a lot. It's allowed us then the permission to ourselves to then take that next step. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And I think it also helped lead to different solutions than what you maybe was seeing to begin with. Because sometimes the pro would become a con because of X, Y, Z, or a lot of times the con isn't really a con. So you kind of come, well, if we did this instead of that, we could make this even bigger or different or make it work. Um, I think seeing a pros and cons list allows you to actually get it out of your head so you can focus on it, but then it gives you options to, okay, well, how else can we fix the situation? There's no one answer usually to any situation. Um, so that's always been huge for us. Cause then when you take a step back or even a day later, we look at that list again, we're like, well, that's a dumb one. Why is that even on there? Um, you know, because you've rethought how you could go about it. So, and we usually sat two to three days on a pros and cons list usually to make sure that we've rolled all the scenarios and all the eyes, you know, is it really pros and cons? Is it fear? Is it, just being too excited is it, I mean, cause it can go both ways. You can be too excited and be like, Oh, well, well, well that didn't go the way it was supposed to because you were so excited. Right. Um, but a lot of us let the cons list be the list that dictates and those cons a lot of times aren't even real. Sometimes aren't real cons. Yeah. So yeah. So then it's the evaluation your, your and permission. List of cons or negatives are not going to be the yeah. same as mine, right? Yeah. Vice versa. Yeah. We would have <laughs> failures. Yeah. Sometimes we'd be very similar in our thoughts and our, and our beliefs with what we thought the outcome would be, but very often it was never exactly the same, which then allowed yeah. us to have that discussion. Well, what, what happens if we do this or, you know what I mean? So a lot of times mm -hmm. for us, when the kids were little was you were staying home with them. So if I left this position and we moved and we did the, uh, how would that look? Um, yeah. And then we would just almost map it out to the point where we got to a point of, confident enough. It was never necessarily probably a hundred percent, but I would probably no. say 70, 80, 85%, but we've gotten so good at it now that we don't necessarily have to do much thinking about it as much as we used to, yeah. um, which has been a good thing, which has yeah. helped both of us when we have yeah. to make these big decisions. So that was the control or the uh, choice piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. We all have choices. Yeah. And if you choose to do nothing, that's still a choice. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And so yep. folks remember that sitting still and staying in the same place and, and just choosing to, to stay still or thinking that you're stay, staying still is still a choice. So just keep that in mind as well. That's one thing that you and I have agreed upon since we were younger is that we were just going to at least keep trying, give it a shot mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, you know, good, bad, or otherwise, at least we were going to have an outcome and then we could try to yep. pivot from that. So go into that permission piece. Okay. Permission Cause I piece. think that, yeah, well, so the reason why I want you to go there is because I think that that's where for me, I'm reflecting to you. That's where you struggle the most is you don't mm -hmm. give yourself permission mm -hmm. to have the positive thoughts, to think that you can do certain things, right? Who am I? Who's going to listen? Right. So to me, that's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a permission. It's like you're yeah. waiting for somebody to tell you that, yes, you can. And Stacy, I'm telling you, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> right. So please just, yeah, talk about that permission piece a little bit. Permission piece. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will have a background similar to mine where I am unknowingly a people pleaser. So I'm a rules follower. Um, I don't mind going against the grain, but not completely against the grain. That's not, that's not allowed, right? <laughs> You can brush up against the grain. Uh, but I think the last few years, I've started to allow myself that permission, like you're saying. I've allowed myself to become, I guess, important. I guess, is that the right word? Or, or you know, my decisions matter too. Um, the things I desire matter also. Not in the, Not to put somebody else on the back burner. That's never my intention, right? I never put anybody on the back burner. 
But going to conferences by myself, telling you that I need a weekend away by myself to be with my own thoughts, to give myself permission to, yes, I can go think for myself. I can go spend time with myself. I can get things organized. That's the way I am. I have to get things organized around me. I have to get organized in my head and then I can function, but I have to give myself permission to do that. First of all, to allow myself to get organized, to allow myself to slow down because life goes, our, as you, most people, my life goes really fast. I have a lot going on at a lot of times. I'm juggling a lot of things, um, mainly with business. But so yeah, the permission to slow down, the permission to think it through, and then the permission to actually act on it um, is, yeah, the biggest thing right now. The permission to act on something is not always easy, but when you see yourself act on it and it's like, oh, that went all right, didn't it? Um, once you can see that a few times, oh, that that didn't hurt or that didn't change the direction, it may not always turn out the way I wanted it to. You know, and there's days where you feel like you're racing and it's going great. And then all of a sudden you hit a wall. That wall is, you've got to, I'm, I'm learning there again. I'm very much learning images. That wall is an inflatable wall. It's not a brick wall. It's an inflatable wall. So if you're on an inflatable, it bounces and it moves and you can sway it and pick it up and turn it. And I'm trying to work on that too. That's kind of the visionary stuff that I work through now in my mind is that what feels like a wall or something I'm bumping up against, it's an inflatable. It's I bounce off and I can go again, or it's going to deflate or it's going to do whatever. I can make it move. It's not permanent. And that's a permission thing too, is to not allow myself to see something as permanent. If that makes sense to anybody out there listening. Um, and it is, it's very much a permission to know that I can move it or I can take it down or I can change it. And that's not always an easy thing because your mind will tell you, well, you've never done it before or that's not worked out before. And well, I'm not doing what I did before. I'm doing it different now. And I've, and you got to take the things that happened before I'm learning is something you learned. Okay. So you're going to do it different this time and the permission to do it different and to keep going, to keep trying it. Cause at some point it's going to work. And at some point, you know, that person that you thought you were going to be friends with suddenly is your friend. And you look back and you're like, wow, we've been friends forever. But when you were first trying to be friends with them, may or may not have worked out very well. So same thing with relationships. How many times did we get, have we all dated and thought, oh, I'm never going to find somebody. Oh, I'm never meant to get, you know, with someone or I'm never going to have whatever. And then suddenly you have it and you don't take the time to stop and give yourself permission to be like, oh, I did do that. A lot of us don't stop once we've accomplished something that you've put out there that you wanted to do. So there again, permission to see the things along the way is starting to become what I'm trying to do. So love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. That's great. So I appreciate you sharing that yeah. with us and with me yeah. as I'm, I'm always asking you all the time to share some wisdom with me yeah. and we'll have to get on these, these, uh, podcasts more often because you're sharing a ton of wisdom. This is awesome. It's always good to hear what's going on with you, right? Cause then yeah. it just relates and helps us become better because it's just an, the art of becoming who we are, who we were even just a few days ago, a few weeks ago, a few months ago. Right. I mean, we're always changing mm -hmm. and giving yourself permission to understand that that's true and to make decisions based on who you are today and where you're going versus who you were. Right. I understand that that's a very difficult thought process. I'm not proclaiming that it's easy because it is not. It's probably one of the hardest yeah. things I've ever done. And I think that you and I both have struggled with that at times, but yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a skill. It's something, it's a muscle, right? You need to build into that. So one thing, and I just want to tie this on here with what you shared there mm -hmm. is the, a suggestion is that when you give yourself the permission and you get yourself that fire and that, that really belief, like you've got the belief that you're going to move forward, act upon it as quickly as you possibly can. And it can be the mm -hmm. most simple thing. Uh, for me, when I was trying to get over my anxiety of sending emails, I would just need to send more emails <laughs> when I was <laughs> launching yeah. this podcast, I went all in and three a week for 10 months or more. And I yeah. just jumped in head first. I made the decision and I committed to it, and I, but I took massive action and that eliminated a, a lot of the fear 
the doubt because I just, I didn't have time to even think about it. I was just mm -hmm. moving. But then I've always had the ability to pivot because that goes back to that choice piece as well. That even if it's not going exactly the way you want it to, you can always change. You can always pivot. Yeah. You can make a different decision. Give yourself permission to make a different decision moving forward. So thanks for sharing that wisdom. Of course. That was so good. I thanks can't wait to me. keep having you. Yeah, come on. And <laughs> we're going to get this big vision you've got set for yourself. We're going to start announcing that to the world and start yeah. sharing that with other people because that's uh, a lot of people. And I think it's going to be more centered towards women. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, ladies will need and will be super excited to hear this big vision that you have uh, moving forward for, for yeah. this business idea. So I'm just excited to dive yeah. deeper into that in the future. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll see where this all goes. As always, you just got to go for the adventure and see where it takes you. Go so. for the adventure and see where it takes you, which is exactly what we did today. We hit record. <laughs> it was this morning. I said, hey, you want to do a podcast? <laughs> She's like, why? <laughs> like, because we've got so many good things to talk about. That's why. So we just hit record. And we, you know, if you could see the 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 stuff that I'm going to cut out of here, yeah, you'd be <laughs> laughing at, at both of us because we just hit record and we just have a conversation. This is a lot of fun. So yeah. folks, if you've hung with us here this long uh, in this episode, uh, Stacey and I both want to express a ton of gratitude. We're just trying to figure this thing called life out. And if we can share some ideas and some things that have worked for us as we're trying to figure out things for ourselves and our family, as we mentioned, where our family has expanded, we've got a new grandson. And so now we're trying to figure out what that's going to look like. We're both trying to, to expand and do some business ideas. But at the same time, we still have regular life responsibilities, just like the rest of us. We have the same chaos going on in our life as you do as well. And if we can get on here and hit record for a few minutes and share a little bit of, of our story and kind of how we're going through that and you find value in that message, we greatly appreciate you hanging out with us so far through this episode. Uh, Stacey, is there anything else you want to tie this one off with? No, uh, just say goodbye to everybody. Yeah, just thanks for having me today, everybody. And just keep going. What's your new idea and see where it takes you. Just keep going, folks. So have a fantastic day. Keep going. What's one thing you can do today that when you get that belief, that desire, what do you really want? When you get that idea, do something, one thing. I don't care how small it is. Do one thing and go do it today and keep going. Until next time, my friends. Bye now.